I'll be giving you 15 tips to grow your network marketing business today. And if you pay attention and use these tips, your business will change. I guarantee you, your business will change. It touches every aspect of your business. Those things that you have not really paid attention to, I'm going to touch on all of them today. And you will see how using these tips, working on these tips, you can produce a very formidable business, right? So the number one tip is for you to decide with all conviction. <coughs> Excuse me. Decide with all conviction that you're going to do this business. Decide with all conviction that you will move this business to the next level. Decide with all conviction that your business is going to be a successful business. <coughs> Decide with all conviction that you will pay attention to this business. Don't be one of those who are doing this business because they are seeing other people doing the business. Decide that I have come into this thing to create success from this thing. And I will not stop until success is mine. Decide. If you decide with all conviction that you will do this business and produce the results contained in it, you will be successful. You will be successful. You see, the number one thing that determines how successful someone can be is the decision to go for success. When you decide you want to be successful and you want to run this thing and become successful through it, every obstacle will fall apart. Everything that seemed to be a problem will fade away because now you know that yes, it is within you to succeed in this thing and you will do whatever it takes to create that success for yourself. So tip number one, decide with all conviction. So don't just say, I decide to be successful. I want you to go back. I want you to sit down. I want you to think about what we are doing. I want you to think about the possibilities for you in this business. Think about the life you can get from this business. And based on that, decide for yourself that this business, I will take it, I will run it for the next five years, nonstop, no matter what is happening, whether I'm seeing the result or not seeing the result, you will run it nonstop because in the end, it is a very formidable business that will give you the life you want. Tip number one, decide with all conviction. Tip number two, you must develop a rugged mindset. Develop a rugged mindset. What is a rugged mindset? <clears throat> we had a training, developing a rugged mindset for, for success in our business. What is a rugged mindset? You see, without a rugged mindset, you cannot succeed in business. Without a rugged mindset, you cannot succeed in life. Without a rugged mindset, because the truth is that the way the world is formulated, the world is structured to ensure you don't succeed. The way the world is formulated, all around us, there are negative-minded people. There are people who are going to talk down on you, people who are going to talk down on your business. There are people who are going to do everything within their means to make sure you don't succeed. Some of them will be physical, will show it all out. Some of them will come in the name of love. They will come as advisors. They will come as helpers. They will come under the umbrella of good intentions. And yes, they actually have good intentions. But you see, their good intentions is premised on ignorance. They have good intentions. But their good intentions is premised on ignorance. What that means is that they don't know what they are doing. These are the people for whom Jesus Christ prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. These kind of people have a, they come telling you or giving you all the good advice, why you shouldn't take the business serious, why you shouldn't do the business, why the business is not good, why the business will not make you successful. They give you all kinds of examples. John did it and failed. Chinas did it and failed. This person did it and failed. Even I also did it and failed. And they are advising you from a position of love not to do the business because they believe you will fail because they are failures. You must have that rugged mindset that tells yourself, I will do my business. I will succeed in my business. I will produce results in my business. I will not back down. I will not cower under pressure. I will not chicken out. No matter what is happening, I will be here to do the business. As you want to have that mindset that is asking, what is the worst that can happen? What is the absolute worst that can happen? Ask yourself that question. When you are doing this business, what is the absolute worst that can happen? Determine the absolute worst. The absolute worst that can happen is somebody telling you, I will not do the business. And what does that leave you? Where does that leave you? It leaves you in this precisely the same position you were before you started. 
So for those of you who are looking at this business and trying to see this business and run this business, and for those of you who are just joining, and even for those of you who have been, who have been in the business, a rugged mindset is critical for success. And let me tell you something. There is no way you can succeed in life without you becoming rugged, especially in business. There's no way. You cannot say, I want to become a millionaire with the attitude of a mediocre. You cannot become a millionaire with the attitude of a thousandaire. Any small thing hits you bad. Somebody tells you, I'm not in the business, you feel so bad. Oh, the guy hurt my feelings. Can you imagine? This person told me, and your pride gets in the way. Remember that pride goes before a fall. That's why they say pride is the devil's favorite sin. So keep your pride aside. Keep everything aside and sit upright. Hold yourself high and take pride. Where you should take your pride is in the business you are doing. And go all out and deploy this business. You know why? Because in this business, you are offering people an opportunity for a better life. In this business, you are offering people an opportunity to live the good life, to be able to provide for themselves and provide for their loved ones. In this business, you are giving people the one thing that most other businesses and hope does not bring to the table, and that is hope. Hope. They hope that tomorrow you can drive a nice car. They hope that tomorrow you can live in a good house. They hope that tomorrow you can, you can have good cash flow. They hope that tomorrow your children can go to better schools. They hope that tomorrow you can live a softer life. It brings hope to the table. Yes, you might say other businesses bring hope to the table, but how many people who have 50,000 Naira can have the kind of hope I just mentioned? Within the next 12 months, you have the audacity to dream. Today, you're any 50,000 Naira. And over the next 12 months, you have the audacity to dream of doing a million naira. And you actually wake up in the morning and you go do something because you feel you can be doing a million naira in 12 months' time. That is the hope that this business brings to the table. The people who quit this business are people who have become hopeless. They no longer see themselves as people who are capable of succeeding. Let me tell you something. Let me explain something very, very clear. And you guys might see this from a very different perspective. If you cannot get five people to join you with 50,000 Naira. If you can't get five people, you believe, not you can't, you believe you are incapable of getting five people to join you at 50,000 Naira, totally 250,000 Naira of their own money. Forget it. You cannot become successful in any business whatsoever. Go and get a job in the post office. If you are looking at this business, where all you need to do is to follow a very functional system and five people can connect to you at 50,000 naira each, only 50K, then success in business is not your portion. I just made it very, very clear. Because you, what other business do you want to do? You want to go into selling cars? How many people can you sell cars to? How much is a car? Is it 50,000 naira? You want to go into selling electronics? Is that what you want to do? So you see, yeah, the business allows you to come at a very low level. You come in at a very low level and you are able to learn the skills. You learn the skills for sales, skills of marketing, skills of leadership, skills of personal development, skills of communication. You learn all these skills as, as, not before, as you do the business. And then using these skills, you're able to communicate with people and they come in, they join your business. They start their own business using our system at 50,000 Naira. If you feel you are incapable of doing that, you are also incapable of creating any result of value in any business whatsoever, because this is just 50K. So you want to develop a rugged mindset that allows you to go through the tribulations or whatever it is that you're going to go through to build success. Because the truth is that the road that leads to success is not a smooth road. It's undulating, it's filled with bumps, valleys, dangers along the way. But you must navigate these dangers to get to the land of success. The most beautiful thing about our business is the entry point is very low, 50,000 Naira. Any Tom, Dick, or Harry who is serious-minded can do 50,000 Naira. But the challenge with it is that not every Tom, Dick, or Harry out there is interested in building a good life for themselves. Even though everybody out there tells themselves they want to make good money, they want to have the good life. There's this thing that usually happens. I ask people. You know, maybe you do it where, where you ask people around you right now, right? If there's anybody around you now, ask the person around you, do you love money? Let's do that exercise, right? I want to see the answer in the chat room. Do you love money? Ask two people or three people around you, do you love money, right? After asking them, I want you to come to the chat room and type the answer they give you. Come to the chat room and type the answer they gave you. Ask them, do you love money? 
the way they answer you, the exact answer they give you, just type it down. The exact answer they give you, type in the chat room. Do you love money? And I will tell you the answer that most people, a lot of people are going to give you, right? Type down the answer they are giving you. Don't make them to tell you yes or no. Whatever they tell you, type it down. Ask somebody around you, do you love money? Type the answer they are giving you. Probably if you want to ask people who are not in this business, because those who are in this business have seen the answer. I have actually had me talk about this, right? Now, in order not to waste time, I'll tell you what most people are going to be telling you. Most people are going to be telling you who doesn't love money. Most people are going to be telling you who doesn't love money. I'm not asking you to answer for yourself. I'm asking you to ask people around you and type the answer they gave you. Most people around you are going to be telling you who doesn't love money. And that's the simple truth with most answers I get. Who doesn't love money? Everybody loves money, but that is a lie. Everybody loves the idea of making money. Everyone loves the idea, but not everybody loves money enough to go for it. That's the simple truth. You can't say I love something and you don't go for that thing. It means you don't love that thing enough. What you love, you go for, right? So you want to ensure that your mindset is developed and ready for success. Number three tip to grow your business, make friends, make friends. You see, I have talked about this a lot of times. I have told a lot of teammates about this one. And I'm telling you guys here now in this meeting, make friends on purpose. Because the truth is, these friends are the people that will put money in your pocket. Make friends. The money that will make you successful, the money that will make you rich, the money that will give you the life you want is not in your pocket. That money is in the pockets of other people. And the only way they can give you that money is if, if you, right? If you give them value and they give you the money. But these are the money is in the pocket of your people, of your friends. You want to make friends. How do you make friends? You want to go all out on purpose to make friends every day. Now, I'm not just talking about friends on Facebook, no. I'm not talking about virtual friends. I'm talking about making real friends. Go all out. Meet people in the course of your day. Introduce yourself to them. Tell them what you do. Compliment them. I love your shoes. I love your hair. What do you do for a living? Right? What do you do for a living? Can I be your friend? And they'll tell you. They'll tell you. As a friend, can I have a number? You collect their numbers. You exchange numbers. When you go back home, you chat them up. Make friends. People are looking for friends today. A lot of people are so fixed on their phones that when they meet somebody physically, they get happy. So go all out. If you make two friends every day, you will have made 60 friends in a month. You will have made 600 friends in 12 months, 720 friends in a year. And you invite these people into your business. Many of them are going to join your business. Many. It is not just collecting numbers and abandoning a number. It is making friends. When you collect somebody's number, find a creative way of staying in touch with the person. Once the person gives you the number, you call you, you dial the person's phone immediately. The moment it enters the person's phone, what do you do? You tell the person, save my number, that's my name, save my number. If they say, no, I'll save it when I get home, say, no, 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 you will save it when you get home. Why not just save it now? It's going to take you less than 30 seconds. Just save it now. My name is this. Tell them, let them save your number. You meet somebody, hi, how are you? You look so amazing. You look sharp this morning. What do you do for a living, right? What do you do for a living? The person smiles. When I, when I was always out there doing it, I have so many pickup lines I use. If I see a guy that looks, I say, wow, well, guy, you look like Denzel Washington, right? Then Denzel Washington, of course, is, is, we all know him very well. You look like Denzel Washington. You look like Tom Cruise. Are you related to Tom Cruise? He looks as sharp as you are. And the person smiles. And we, and we talk, we laugh, we exchange friends. We check numbers. You see a lady, oh, wow, you look like Beyonce. Are you related to her? Or whatever it is you want to use. But the most effective way of doing this is simply meet somebody. Hi, you look super sharp. My name is Susan So. Can I be your friend? Very simple. You look super sharp. My name is this. Can I be your friend? Only a devil will tell you you can't be my friend. And if anybody tells you that you don't want to be your friend, you don't need that person in your life. That's the truth about it. Or another way I simply do it, I go out and meet somebody. Hi, you look super sharp. My name is Susan So. I am on a mission today to raise five smart and forward thinking friends like you. Can you be my friend number one? Very simple. My name is Susan So. I'm on a mission today to raise five smart and forward thinking friends like you. Can you be my friend number one? Everybody is going to be your friend number one that day. 
I said, sure, 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 we can be friends. Can I, can, what number can I use to reach you as a friend? You collect the number. What number can I use to reach you as a friend? You collect the number, you exchange, you talk, you talk a little, and then you go. Get this person. You can do two a day, you can do five a day. And once you get home, engage them in the chat. And once you collect your number, flash your number, let them save it immediately. Once they save your number, you get home, you engage them in the chat. And then for everybody you make as a friend, you add them to a broadcast list. You add them to a broadcast list. So that when you send a generic broadcast to friends, it goes to all of them. Create a broadcast list. Put all of them all to the broadcast list. So that when you come to that broadcast list and you type, hi, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well today. I just thought of you this morning and I prayed for you. God bless you. You send, everybody will get it. Don't put their names. Because when you put the name, the person knows it's going to the wrong person. So you just send a generic message. It goes to all of them. When they reply you, it's coming as, it's coming as a private message. And you can engage them in private chats. But once in a while, send a broadcast that goes to all of them. Keep them as friends. Keep them as friends. And you gradually begin to bring them to come take a look at what your business is all about. So make friends, right? Tip number four to become a network marketing expert to produce great results is to develop positive daily habits. Develop positive daily habits. I cannot overemphasize this because you see, you are, you are, you are a product of your habits. And I had something that it takes about 30 times of doing something to make it a habit. I can't really can't remember, but I think they're about. You're a product of your habits. We have what we call our daily method of operation, right? For full-timers and part-timers, you want to make it a habit. You want to do everything possible to make sure you follow our DMO, our daily method of operation from 8 to 9 a.m. cell meeting, from 9 to 10 a.m. Follow up calls from 10 to 11. Everything we do, follow it up the way it is written down. If you don't have the DMO, right? Ask your colleagues, they will give it to you. Ask your leaders, they will give it to you. Develop that as a habit. For those of you doing the business full time, develop it. For those of you doing the business part time, develop the DMO for part timers as a habit. Three hours, in, four hours a, a, a day. One hour in the morning for your cell meeting. Then one hour in the evening after you finish your work for your one hour for prospecting. One hour for presentation, or for follow up. One hour for um, for booking calls, for inviting people into meetings, right? So follow that. Create a habit of doing that. You say you're doing a business part time. It should be a part time business, not just a hobby. So when you come back from work by five o'clock, take one hour, relax with your family, then go sit down and put in your three hours. Put in your three hours. It's a business you are building. If you had a supermarket. A supermarket, you put 20 million naira, and you also have a job. When you come back from your job, don't you go to your supermarket first? You will go to the supermarket. You will stay there till 10 p.m. before you come back home, and you will do it every day. Then on Saturday, you will give it a full Saturday. You will not only do it three, um, um, in the evenings on Saturday. You will give it every day. If you say you're running a business part-time, that is what it means to run part-time. If you have a part-time job, you don't do your part-time job anyhow. You do your part-time job regulated. But the difference with this one is that you are not you are not around. You are not you are you. I mean, nobody is putting you under pressure that you must do it. So now you are the one who is supposed to be accountable to yourself if you must produce results. So you want to develop positive daily habits. It is these daily habits that will help you to grow. It is these daily habits that will help you to succeed. If you tell yourself all I'm going to do every day is put one hour into the business, put that one hour into the business every day, and in that one hour do the things that need to be done. Develop the habits. If it, if it is going to be a habit of, of trainings, a habit of develop the habit. If it's going to be a habit of showing up early for your meetings, right? Keeping to appointment, develop daily habits. Make your habits a routine. Have a structured approach to running your business. Remember, any business that is not organized is not a business, it's a play group. So if you must have this business become a business for you, ensure that you develop daily habits. Number five, tell good stories. Let me tell you one thing. Network marketers are storytellers. Or oh, let me rephrase it this way. Successful network marketers are storytellers. We tell you our own story and we're a collector of stories. If you want to succeed in our business, make sure you have stories. And those stories must be true. They must be real. They must not be lies. You don't succeed by lying your way out. No. Tell good stories. Tell great stories. Learn your story. If you don't have your story, meet your, your, your leader to craft your story. 
You must not be making a million naira every day to have a good story. Your destination can be part of your story, right? And there are few steps you must follow if you want to be a good storyteller. Step part, part one, where you were before now, your background. Part two, because there are four parts to a good story. Number one, your background, where you're coming from. What, number two, what you didn't like about the background. Number three, how this business came to the rescue. And number four, how you feel about the future or what you think about the future. That's your destination, right? So your story will go in those four ways. First part, my destination. I, I used to, and your story will not be very long. You know, I came from a background where, my, where I struggled. My parents struggled to take care of my bills, take care of our family, to provide for us. Things were hard. Most times we eat just once a day. Things were not going on well. Whatever your background is, say it quickly, right? Now, second part, what didn't you like about your background? Well, for the neighbors to always be the ones laughing at us, for, for me to always be the last to take care of my bills, um, for, for, for um, I couldn't look my, my, my kids in the face because I couldn't provide for them. It hurt me so much. I felt bad when things like this happened, right? Part three, how network marketing came to the rescue. One day, a friend of mine called me and told me that he came across a crazy concept that blew his mind. And the moment he saw that concept, he remembered me. And he sent me a video to watch, right? And it took me two weeks to watch that video. It was just a three-minute video. I purposely refused to watch the video. But I had to finally, under pressure, I decided to watch that video. And everything changed for me. And I saw this most powerful and beautiful system. I saw the opportunity. And I had no money to join. But I went all out. I borrowed money. I signed up into the business, right? And now the fourth part, how you feel about the future. I want to thank God that I was able to get started in that business, in this business. I want to thank God that I was able to borrow money to start this business. Yes, I might not be financially free right now. I might not be a top earner in this business right now. But what I see right now is hope on my table. I see cash flow. I see success in my future. I see light in the tunnel. I see myself being able to achieve the greatness that I've always desired for myself. And my cash flow is improving by the day because I'm under the mentorship of the best of the best in this industry. So I thank God I saw this most powerful and amazing opportunity. So very simple story, very short story, four parts. Where you were before you saw the business, what you, that's your background, what you didn't like about your background, how this business came to the rescue, and what you feel about the future, right? We use those four parts and we we'll create a compelling story. So do that for yourself. Create your own story and share with your leaders. Don't wait for them to come and tell you, come and share, come and share. No, create your story and call your leaders and share with them. Because for everybody you show the business, you tell your story. For everybody you show the business, you tell your story. Some of you who invite us to come and do close down calls with you. The moment you call us to do close down call, somebody comes to the underline, you introduce and everything. The first thing we do is that we tell you our story. We tell you our story. Even before we now tell you, invite you to join the business, we tell you our story. You must be a good storyteller. Now, if you feel you don't have any story worth telling, you can tell the story of some other person. Be a collector of stories. Go to the Labona Vida website, labonavidaprojects.com, and you will see our stories. You see good stories. I want to tell you the story of this person. This guy, blah, 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 blah. You give the story and relate to the story. Tip number five to become a great network marketer is sponsor your new distributors, your new recruits. Sponsor them well. Sponsor them well. Are we getting value from this meeting so far? Are we getting value from the meeting so far? I want to see your chat. I want to know if I'm interacting with people. Are we getting value from the meeting so far? So tip number five, sponsor your new distributors well. Sponsor them well. You see, so many times we have had situations where people come in, they sign into the business. Some of these people are supposed to become juggernauts in the business. They're supposed to become amazingly successful in this business. But do you know what happened? They faded away. Why? Because they came under uplines who were not ready to run their business. Uplines who were fearful. Uplines who were not productive. Uplines who were not out there to help the people grow. I have seen people who will have become huge and successful in this business, but they did not succeed. Why? Because they killed the people who they were giving to plants. At a point in time, I had a grain of corn in my pulse, 
a roasted grain of corn in my course. And I use that grain of corn as an example to people. I show you that corn. I see, you see this grain. This grain could have been planted and it could have produced a, I mean, a stock. You can take that corn stock, bring out the seeds, plant again, and you produce a field with corn. And you can take that and plant, and you can actually fill up acres of land from the proceeds of that one grain, produce of that one grain of corn in, in less than, in about 24 months. But it didn't happen. Why did it not happen? It didn't happen because you roasted that grain of corn. Many people roast people that would have become massively successful in their business. They roast them alive. They roast them. You know why you roast them? Because you feel you're not capable of sponsoring them. You don't do the right thing. Most times you're only interested in the initial payments you receive, the direct referral bonus and the, and the matching bonus. That's what you're interested in. You are not interested in their growth. You're interested in that one direct referral bonus. Instead of sponsoring them well, so that unlimited direct referral, unlimited matching bonuses begin to come for you. So for everybody you bring into the business, that person is either the doorway, the door, the destination, right? And even if the person is a destination, the person is a doorway that opens to other doors. So everybody you see in your business is a door through which you're going to get other people to come into your business. And they cannot become doors if you don't sponsor them. How do you sponsor them? You bring them into our King's Mass Academy program. You take them through our SMO checklist and we work with them following the process to produce results in them, right? If you follow the, 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 the activities of the standard method of operation checklist, the SMO checklist, you will sponsor your people very well. In fact, that's why the SMO checklist is there in the first place. Because people come in, they join our business and they're asking, what next? What next? They don't know what to do next. Our job is to show them what to do next, right? And to do it with them. The SMO checklist tells you a couple of things. One of the things it does is this. It puts me and you, I've been in the business for seven years. You just joined the business this morning. Using the SMO checklist, you and I are on exactly the same level of competence. You and I, we're on the same level of competence. What do I mean by that? The SMO checklist tells me how to recruit people. It tells me to the kind of scripts to use. We have the scripts in our, in our success manual. I can use the scripts and read it out and use that to invite my friends. The same script I am using as a seven-year-old in the business is the same script you're using as a one-day-old in the business. The SMO checklist shows the same activities I use to sponsor my people is the same activity you're using to sponsor your people. The same Kingsman Academy my people enter is the same Kingsman Academy your people enter. What my people learn is what your people learn. The meetings I will organize with my people is the same meetings you will organize with your people. Why? Because we are all following the system. It's a system. So if you don't have a growing team, the reason you don't have a growing team has nothing to do with any other person, but with you, entirely you. It is your fault that your team is not growing because you recruited people and you didn't sponsor them well. So you want to invest time with anybody you join, you bring into the business. There are people that somebody joins them in that business and they're calling them and they're not picking their calls anymore. Now this my downline is disturbing me. Really? Your downline is disturbing you? Gather them and give them to me. How can your bank account be disturbing you? How can your financial freedom be a source of disturbance to you? If your downline calls you and you're not picking the calls, it means you are a bad sponsor, a very, very bad, an evil sponsor because you're being wicked to not just that your downline, but to generations unborn that would have come through that downline. So make sure you take the time to sponsor your people. If you don't know what to do, look for the SMO checklist and read it 20 times. Read the content of that SMO checklist 20 times or 10 times so that you understand very well what you need to do. And then you begin to attend the Kingsman's Academy program where it will be explained more to you and you can produce the results. Tip number seven, don't force your business on anyone. Don't force your business on anyone. You see, the truth is this. There are so many people who want to run this business and succeed. There are so many people who want to run the business and succeed. And because they want to succeed, they get desperate. They start chasing people all over the place. They, they talk to somebody about our business. 
and they begin to force the business down the throats of these people. You want these people to do this business. You want them to do the business, and you are there forcing your what your throat, your, your business down their throats. That's not how you run the business. You see, we don't succeed, we don't win our business by, by pressuring people. Pressure tactics does not work. Our business is not a business of convincing and trading. We're not here to buy and sell. We're not here to convince people, to come and convince people. And you are there pressuring them, pressuring them. No. We are in the business of consultancy and training. Consultancy and training. What we're doing is that we're in an education-based business, right? We're in an education-based business. What we're doing here is to educate people, educate people, show them an alternative way they can raise cash flow for themselves and give themselves a good life. Answer their question and nudge them, nudge them to take action because they need to be nudged. But when you see that somebody is vehemently against running your business, don't pressure the person. Because you will sign up that person and the person will not do the business. We are not looking for people who have money to just come and throw in. No. We are looking for people who from their own hearts have decided they want to succeed in the business. From their own hearts, they have decided they're going to create, they want something better for themselves. Those are the people. How do we find them? We show the system. We show the business to everybody. We don't hold back on show the business. We show it to everybody. But from those we show the business, we work with the willing. We work with the willing. Some people come in willing. And before you know what's happening, they tell you they're no longer interested. No problem. What we try to do is to educate them more. We educate them more. If we educate them and they catch it, great. If we educate them and they're not interested, no problem. No problem. Jesus Christ recruited 12 people. 12. Out of the 12 of them, one of them lost focus. One of them lost the vision. One of them decided not to move to the end. If it can happen to Jesus, who are you? Out of the 12, one left. That one living means his, his, his recruitment arm dropped by as much as 0.8%, thereabout. So you can see, you can see, you can see how, how sorry, dropped as much as 8%, 8.7%, percent thereabout. So you can see that he lost 8% of his recruiting force, yet he was able to build a business of over a billion people in the world today not talk about those who have come and gone. So you can see exactly what we're talking about. You don't need the whole world to succeed in our business. One person running the business seriously on your left, one person running the business seriously on your right, and you have yourself a formidable business, as in the world that is formidable. If you are following what I'm saying, I want you to come to the room, chat room, and type in, now I get it. Now I get it. Type in, now I get it. Don't force your business to anybody. You take on anybody especially your family and your friends. There's something I want to say about family and friends. Some people think that they are the ones that will make them successful. No, your family and your friends are not the ones that will make you successful in this business. Your family and your friends are the place where you learn the business. You learn the business. You become successful in the cold market. The cold market are the people you don't know. That is where you become successful. You learn the business in with your family and friends. I'll give you an example. If I want to learn how to prospect, how to run my presentation, what do I need to do? I call my brothers, four of them. I tell them, I want to learn how to run my presentation. Or I can call my friends. I want to learn how to run my presentation. Come sit down. Let me do what I want to do. Don't criticize me. Don't laugh at me. Let me finish. At the end of it, you ask me any questions you want to ask. I will take as much of the questions as I can take, right? I want you to help me so I can get better. You can actually tell that to your family and friends. They come sit down and you show them the position, you show them the business. And at the end of the day, you close them down. You ask them which of you want to get started right away. You actually show them a full business. If they want to start, great. If they want to start, no problem. But guess what? They came to support you. So you actually invited them to come and see what you are doing. You see, you can practice on your family. You can tell them, okay, you know what? Let me try and see if I can make you pay, right? So I will try and see if I can make you pay to join this business. So you can ask me any question you want to ask me. I will answer it and see if I can make you pay. And you start practicing with them. They will ask you a question. You'll be answering, you'll be answering. You are, but you are giving them information. You are actually educating them. You'll be surprised when you are done. One of them will say, you know what? Let me do this business. Let me do this business. Because you practiced on them. 
Your family and your friends don't necessarily need to join you for you to become successful in our business. They don't. Even if they don't join you, there are so many other ways you can get successful in this business. You can pick our questionnaires and you can go out in the city where you stay and you share the questionnaire to 10 people a day. And you do that for 30 days. You will have shared the questionnaire to 30 people. You invite those 30 people into our meetings and you show them the business. You will succeed. You will succeed. So you want to make sure, you want to make sure that you don't put pressure on your people, undue pressure on people. The reason why a lot of people put pressure on people is because they are not prospecting enough. They prospect one person and that person does not join them and the whole hell is let loose. No, be lavish in your prospecting. Be lavish. Prospect lavishly. Prospect lavishly. Don't be stingy with your prospecting. There's so many people in Nigeria, over 200 million people in Nigeria. Don't be stingy. Show it to everyone. Be impatient with your prospecting. Be impatient with your prospecting, but be patient with your results. What I mean by that is go all out. Prospect, 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 prospect. But as for the results, be patient, be patient. Do not look at your results. If you look at your results, you will not get what you are looking for. Don't look at your results. Wait, do the activities. In the long run, the results will come. Tip number eight, listen and be a master at asking questions. Listen and be a master at asking questions. You see, to be a good conversationist, you want to be able to converse with people a lot. You don't want to be the one on the yakking side. You don't want to be the one on the talking side. You want to be the one on the asking side and the listening side. I told you that they learn to ask open-ended questions. When you ask an open-ended question, do you know what happens? It engages people to start talking. What do you like about this, our business? It's an open, open-ended question. What is your opinion towards, you know, financial freedom? Tell me. And the guy starts talking. Financial freedom, I want to blah, 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 blah. As you are talking, you are listening. You are listening to understand what he's saying. And then when he's done, from what you are saying, you can pick another question. Okay, you said so so and so is so so and so is so so and so. I didn't get that quite well. Can you elaborate more on that? He starts again, blah, 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 blah. You are listening and you are asking questions. Be a great listener. And there are some core questions that you can ask in our business to help you produce results. When somebody has seen the presentation, there are a number of questions. You can start, what I try to do is ask the person, okay, from all you have seen, the information you've gathered here from this whole stuff, what is the best way towards getting you started right away? What is the best way? I always want them to start immediately. I always call them to start immediately before I start asking another thing. What are the next steps we need to take towards getting you started right away? And uh, we need to pay for it, blah, 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 blah. Then you can create a conversation. If it brings up an objection, you handle it. What is the number one reason, right? Can you outline two reasons, rather, why you would love to start this business right away? Based on all the information you've gathered, can you outline two core reasons why you would love to start this business right away? The person begins, okay, I would love to start the business right away because of blah, because of this, because of this, you know? You have creative conversations. You can also ask the person, what is the minimum amount? If you are making that minimum amount from this business, we'll tell, we'll make you, you know, we tell you, we make you say, you know what, I will never stop this business. What is that minimum amount? Now, this is a close question, but it's not just one question. It's a precursor to a number of questions. They can say, eh, the minimum amount I want to make is um, 5 million in a month. All right. That's, that, that's an answer. 5 million in a month. What do you do next? You want to break it down. So, John, are you saying that by, if you are making 4 million, 1 million naira in a month, you will say this business is a useless business? And you abandon the business? Is that what you're saying? He said, no, 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 no. I'm not abandoning the business, blah, 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 blah. But that means you didn't understand my question. My question was, what is the minimum amount for which you will pay attention to this business and give this business the time it needs to get that amount? He will now come down, okay, 500,000 and a minimum amount. So John, you'll come again, John. So what you're saying is, if this business is paying you 450,000 naira every month, you will not do the business. You will not add that money to whatever you're currently making today. Is that what you're saying? Say, no, now, it's, it's money now. I'll do the business, blah, blah, blah. Then, John, you haven't gotten my question. 
I am asking for the minimum. The minimum means one cobo below that amount, you will not do this business. What I mean is this. If your current job is paying you 100,000 Naira, and this business will pay you, you, you now say this business will pay, if this business, is, your minimum is 200,000 Naira, or your minimum is 100,000 Naira, it means that at 99,000 Naira, you are telling yourself that you won't end the 99,000 Naira, you will focus on your only 100K that come from your job. So what is that minimum for you? By the time you stretch that, sometimes they will go to as low as 50K or more or lower than that. Then you move to the next question. How much time are you prepared to put in every week so as to build a business that can be paying you 50,000 Naira a month? How much time per week? How many hours per week? And they will give you how many hours? Now, you also want to make them understand something. You are already earning whatever it is you are earning today in your job, in case you don't know the figure. How many hours do you put at work? Eight hours minimum every day. That is 40 hours a week, and you earn this amount. Now you want to earn an extra 100 hours, 100,000 naira in a month. How many hours are you prepared to bring out every day or in a week generally to put in? And they can tell you. So they can say two hours a week. All right. You want to put two hours a week to start in a, a, a 100,000 naira extra every month. Does that, does that calculation work well for you? That means in only eight hours of working in a week, you make 100,000 naira. Is that okay? Do you think that is okay? Sometimes they might increase it, sometimes they might say it's not it's okay. Whatever it is, you continue. Okay, so Mr. John or Mr. Prospect. Now let's just take a look at one more thing. It is you asking great questions, right? For how long are you prepared to put in this amount of hours to build a business that will be paying you this your 50K or 100K in a month? For how many months are you prepared to do it? For how many years are you prepared to do it? And let him answer. Some can say they're only going to do it for two months, one month. Okay, so you want to do it for one month to produce the result. Does that work for you? Don't you think you need to adjust something? And when they now finally tell you, you now come down to the main question. So John, if I could show you how working five hours, I mean, one hour a day, three days a week for six whole months, you can begin to make an extra um, 50K, 100,000 in monthly income. Will you be ready to start this business right after that? I say, yes, 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 you will be ready. I said, no, let me take that question again. I need to understand the question. If I could show you in our powerful system, how you can you work five hours a week for six months, right? To build a business that will be paying you 100K extra every month. Would you be ready to get started immediately? The guy says, yes, we're ready to get started. Great. You said something, if I would you. So it means you have to do your part for him to do his part. So what is your own part? Your own part is very simple. You bring out our SMO checklist and you bring out our six months cash flow plan, right? And you show him the SMO checklist clearly and he sees how possible it is for five people to join him and how we can work with those five people to join. The, to join. And then you show him our Kingsman's Academy program, how we work with those people. And then you show him the result he's going to get by working and creating a team of five building their own five. And at the end of the day, you look at it. So John, what is the best way towards getting you started right away, just like you said? What is the best way towards getting you started right away, just like you said, right? How would you like to make a payment? You want to use ATM card? You want to use a transfer? You want to, however, how would you like to make a payment? Now you've seen it. You close him down. So you want to get into the mode of asking questions over and over and over and over again. The more questions you have, you ask, the more people will tell you how you can sell them to join the business. Number nine, don't put too much pressure on each individual prospect. Now, initially we told you, don't put pressure on, don't, don't, don't put pressure on, on your people, right? Don't force your business on anyone. And also now, don't put too much pressure on each individual prospect. Why did I say this? What many people do sometimes is that they make a list of five people and then they show these five people the business and they spend the rest of their working life making the lives of these five people miserable. You are calling them per second, per second to come and join the business. Every second, come and join the business. Every second, come and join the business. Hey, John, Anna, you don't pay. Hey, John, when you go pay? Hey, John, how the payment? Hey, John, this one payment. No, 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 no. Don't put pressure on individual prospects. That pressure should be distributed across all your prospects. 
What that means is that each person is only feeling a slight nudge from you. They're all feeling a slight nudge as you close them down. It's not one prospect every morning you're calling him. Every afternoon you're calling him. Every night you're calling him. Eventually they'll block your line. They'll block your line. You're not able to reach them again. And you start wondering, why did the person block me? The person blocked you because you're putting too much pressure. And that is because you are under prospecting. You don't want to under prospect. You want to prospect lavishly. You want to expose the business to everybody. And when you expose the business to everybody, guess what is going to happen? People, a lot of people are going to join your business. Number 10, be enthusiastic and enjoy the process. Our business is an amazing business. It's a sweet business. It's a beautiful business. You want to be enthusiastic. When people see you, they want to see you happy about the business. Nobody wants to look at a sad face. When you come to do the business, keep whatever is bothering you outside and show up in front of your prospects, smiling, happy. I once watched a movie and um, they showed the backstage and the man was about to go on stage and everything was not going well for him. He was under pressure. You know, people were, a lot of things were happening. He received a call he didn't like just backstage and they were already introducing him to come in, you know? And the man was very sad backstage. He started walking towards the, towards the stage, walking towards the stage. And as they were calling his name, the curtains were opening for him to come in and immediately his face, his late face lit up, bright, smiling, he came in, dancing, shouting, singing, talking and everything. He captured the crowd. He was so enthusiastic, so sweet, you know? But nobody knew that that man had problems just before coming in. Listen, nobody wants to know your problem. Nobody wants to know that you're not eating this morning. Your prospects don't want to know that you don't have money to transport yourself. They don't want to know that your car has broken down. They don't want to know that your mother is not feeling well. Your prospects don't want to know that your dog died yesterday. Nobody cares. You need to know that upfront. Your prospects don't care. All your prospects care about is what is in it for me. And you must enthusiastically show them that. What is in it for them? And as you do that, enjoy the process. Listen, our business is amazing. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It is captivating. Our business is enables you to interact with all kinds of people. Enjoy the process. Why not make money happy? Why not be happy in the process of making money? Whatever the difficulty is, see it as part of the stuff, part of the challenge, part of where you're going through. Enjoy the process and be enthusiastic. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. If you want people to join you, be somebody they like, be somebody they know, be somebody they enjoy being around. Number 11, keep your why in the forefront. Your why, your reason for joining the business. Keep it in front of you always. Why are you in the business? What is your selfish reason for joining this business? What is that your selfish goal for joining the business? I like using selfish goal because a lot of people will tell you that they want to save the world. They want to rescue, rescue people from poverty and they are broke, they don't have. And you, they're telling you that they want to save the, 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 the world. They want to make other people rich, not themselves. Understand this, understand this. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. As means what you're doing to yourself is what you do to your neighbor. So if you don't love yourself, how can you love your neighbor, right? So you practice it on loving yourself so you know what it means to love some other person. So keep your reason for joining the business in your forefront, your selfish reason. Why are you in the business? Are you in the business for your family, for your children, for your spouse, for the car, for the house, for your whatever your selfish reason is, right? Keep that in front of you. If it means doing a picture and posting those pictures where you can see them, do it. Post those pictures where you can see them so that it will keep on driving you towards your goal. Keep your why in front of you. Tip number 12, to produce a powerful business. Be a leader and not just a recruiter. Be a leader and not just a follower. You see, when you sign up into our business, you came in at the bottom of the food chain but you started your own food chain, right? So right now, what you want to do is to start working and getting people to join your team and lead them around. Lead them to the cell meetings. Lead them to the, um, to the Kingsman's Academy program. Lead them to the SMO checklist. Lead them into presentations. Lead them into everything that we do in the business. Lead your team to success. Don't just recruit someone and abandon the person. Your job is to make your team multiply. And your team can only multiply if you are a good leader. You will learn how to lead, but at least be present first. 
You cannot live in essentia. For you to live, you have to be present. So start by being present in every of the required meetings you're supposed to be and learn and lead your people into the meetings. Even if you don't know how to, to handle the meeting yourself, right? But be the one leading your people into the meeting. That is how leaders are born. Let me tell you, the team has put, has put together everything you need to produce powerful success stories in your business. The only thing you now need to do is to lead your people into the meetings. Lead them into the activities. Lead them into the events. Let us go. Let us do this. Let us do this. Let us. That should be a word. That's the word used by leaders. Let us. It is not go and attend cell meeting. Go and attend this. Go and attend that. It is let us go. Let us go. Let us go. Anybody here today who learns the language of let us will build a formidable business. <clears throat> Let us recruit, let us invite into the event on Saturday. Let us invite people into the masterclass. Let us go and do recruit, the share questionnaires. Let us, let us, let us. That's what it means for you to be a leader. Let me tell you, when I talk about becoming a leader in our business, not just a recruiter, I'm not talking about you are the one handling cell meeting. You are the one handling the masterclass. You are the one doing, no. Being a leader is you being in front and guiding your team into the activities. Simple. Anybody can do that. Don't worry. There are people going to run the cell meetings. There are people that will run the master class. There are people that will do all those things that need to be done. Your own job is simply lead your people into the meetings. If I ask you how many of the people are in this meeting now, do you know how many of them? Did you even know how many people attended, attended the meeting currently? Are you aware or are you alone? Lead your people into the meeting. Tip number 13. Have great work ethics. <clears throat> you see, in the end, it is going to come down to your work ethics. It's going to come down to the work you are putting in. It's going to come down to how much time you are putting in your work. It's going to come down to how productive you make your work. If your work ethic is poor, you will have a team with poor work ethics. You come to the office, you say you're doing business full time, you come to the office and all you're doing there is making noise, making noise, making noise. <clears throat> And that's one of the reasons why in all our offices in the champions team, we don't allow people to eat ground nuts. Ground nuts are banned from our offices because that's one very bad way you can, you can, you can, you can, you can destroy people. Somebody comes to the office, you come to three cups of ground nuts to eat. Spread the ground nuts, fix one. When you're eating ground nuts, you break it. You are looking at it first, whether there's sand. You don't break with one hand, you are breaking with two hands, right? You are breaking. Once you break it, you check whether there's sand, you put it in your mouth, you kill this one, you cut another one, you are chewing. You are looking at it, whether there's sun inside, you eat again, you are dropping it, you chew again, you are breaking it. Your eye is engaged. Your two hands are engaged. Your brain is engaged, checking for sun. Your mouth is engaged, eating the granules. There are so many of them there. It takes you roughly 30 seconds to get done with one, and then you pick the second one again, and you are doing it. You pick the third one again, you are doing it. What you find out is, you have ended up wasting a lot of time eating granules, banned from the offices. You don't, you are, you are not a good work example when it's your, your downlines are seeing you eating granules during time for work, even if it is break time, even if it is break time, because it will still spread more than your break time. When you sit down to do your business for the day, do the business that brought you to the place to do your business. Do the business, make the calls, hit your numbers, Hit your numbers. Hit your numbers. Don't stop because you are tired. Stop when the work is done. Champions stop when the work is done. They don't stop because they are tired. You tell yourself, okay, every day I'm going to make 100 calls. And you come and you are making your calls. And it is closing time. You've done only 70 calls. And you stop? No. You continue. That is work ethics. When you don't have your target, you can't go far. As a full-timer, you are supposed to be doing at least 100 calls a day. You're not doing 100 calls and you're carrying your bag and you're going home. Going home to what? What are you going to tell them at home? Now you work that day, your work ethic is poor. If you are doing a lot of follow-up calls that day, if you're going to do follow-up calls, at least there should be 30 follow-up calls. If there are 30 follow-up calls within the course of your day, properly done follow-up calls, then you now added a couple of more um, booking calls into presentations, that's okay. But if you're going to do strictly book
booking calls in a day, you must do at least a hundred booking calls because one follow up call sometimes can get up to 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. But the big booking calls are typically one, two minutes. So you want to make sure that your work ethics is good. You want to become a millionaire. But the truth is that not everybody is going to become one. Some people are going to be broke and poor because of their work ethics. If you do what I do, you will get the results. If you do more than I do, you will get more than the results I get. If you do less than I do, you will get less than the results I get. I want to see a day come in this team when people in this team are making way more money than I am making in the business. I want to see a day in this team when people in this team are in the top 20 highest earners in Nigeria. Some of you might end up becoming top one. I want to see that day when there are 30, 40, 50 people in this business making way more money than me. But one thing I want to promise you is that I will not lower the standard for you to I will go and produce at my best possible results and a step higher than that. If you can beat me at the game, I will be the one to raise you up on the stage so that you receive your award. Your work ethics will determine how far you will go in your business. Tip number 14, be genuine and ethical. Be genuine and ethical. Don't deceive people. Don't lie to people. Don't, 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 don't because you want to do the business, you are getting, you are doing things that are not ethical. No, be truthful in your business. Now, one thing I want to say here is this. Be, when you speak to people about the business, use language, great language, right? Language of successful people. Don't use the language of the broke man, the language of the poor man. If people don't understand your language, it's not your problem. They are, you're not going to hold yourself responsible for their use of English. Somebody told me, why did you tell us they are helping people, um, um, uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are helping people raise, um, showing people authority ways to raise money to start a business, fund a business or fund projects, blah, 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 blah. Why did you just come out and tell them that you are doing network marketing? I said, I am not responsible for your use of English. I am not responsible for your use of English. You went to school like I went to school. I paid attention during English language lectures. I don't know if you did. Now, I'm not asking you to go and tell the person that, but I know who I was talking to. Right? So I don't know if you, if you did pay attention, but for me, I paid attention, right? What is our language? We will show you alternative ways to raise money, to start a business, fund the business and fund projects without taking loans, without dropping collateral, without paying back the funds generated. Question number one, is this an alternative way to raise money? The answer is yes. It's an alternative way to raise funds. What you do with the fund is up to you. I want to ask you a question. Are you interested in raising money to start a business? Yes or no? Are you interested in raising money to fund a business? Yes or no? Are you interested in raising money to fund projects? Yes or no? Probably you are the one that came with the wrong intention. So if those were your real, those were really your intentions, how much of the money you are making from this business are you putting apart to start your business, fund the business, or fund projects? How, how much are you putting apart? Did you take a loan to get the money you're putting in that from this business? You didn't take a loan. Did you drop a collateral for the money? No, you don't. The people, who, most people who want to start a business are looking for loans, and those loans come with loans and we come, come with collateral. But here, you're able to still raise money without loans, without collateral. But you are the one that will determine how much of that money you will raise through our system. So if you have a problem with the English language we spoke, please collect your certificate back, collect your school fees back, because you obviously didn't pay attention. Probably it's not even the fault of the teachers because the way you didn't pay attention to this one might be the way you didn't pay attention to what the teachers were telling you in school. Why am I saying this? Every script we use in our team is sanctioned. It is looked at. We make sure that there's no lie in it. We make sure there's no lie in the scripts. So we don't deceive you. But if you expect me to stand up, uh -huh, come and do network marketing. It is network marketing, one on the left, one on the right, blah, 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 blah. That is how poor people speak. That's how poor people talk. And that's the reason they are poor. You go into a car shop, you, you say you're a car salesman, and you come to somebody, okay, come and buy a car. Come and buy a car. And you expect the man to buy a car from you. Come and buy a car. See your man, like, come and buy a car. Why does he need to buy the car? Why don't you sell, why don't you sell the, the reasons why he should have that car? Instead of selling the car, that what you need to be a great salesman. You need to learn how to speak the language of money. So be genuine. Don't deceive people. And be yourself. Don't be that person who is going to come out and you are making yourself who you are not. Deceiving people that you are making 10 billion, billion every three minutes. No, no. Where you are currently is good enough. 
your destination where you're going to, selling it is good enough. Sell the story the way it is. Don't go and oversell and reason and tip number 15. Don't take rejection personally. Don't take rejection personally. And this one is the biggest one because this is what destroys a whole lot of people. You see, when somebody tells you he's not interested in our business, the person is not rejecting you. That person is not rejecting you. That person is rejecting an opportunity to give themselves the good life. That person is rejecting an opportunity to give themselves a great life. That person is rejecting an opportunity to give their family a great life. That person is rejecting an opportunity and not rejecting you. Don't take it personal. Don't let it bother you. You show somebody how to go on vacations, live the dream life and everything, and say, I don't want it. That's fine. That is totally fine. Because it's not for everybody. The Bible says the poor you will always have in your midst. The poor you will always have in your midst. Probably a person is one of those the Bible was talking about. So don't take it personally. And remember, you must meet setbacks. You must meet stumbling blocks, obstacles on your way to success. So when people reject what you're telling them, don't worry. There's so many more people in front of you. In fact, you are paid for the rejection. You are paid. When people are telling you they're not interested, you are paid for that. You need to understand that we're not looking for everybody. We're looking for those who are looking. We're looking for those who are ready to change their lives. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for people who are ready to move to the next level. And they are not so, as they are not as much as people who don't care about their lives. Those who don't care about where they're going to are so much. So what do we need to do? We are sieving. We sieve them away, right? We sieve them away. We are only interested in what the people who are moving to a destination with us and not interested in people who are not going. So make rejection your friend. Don't take it personal. Let me tell you, if nobody is rejecting you, it means you are not doing the business. If the devil is not tempting you, if you are not under the pressure of temptation from the devil, it means you're already inside the devil's penalty box. You're already one of his own. He's not going to bother you anymore. He's holding you firmly. The only people he tempts are people who are not in his penalty box. If you are not getting rejected, what that simply means is that you're not in business. You're not doing the business. Nobody hearing from you. But as far as you are doing this business, people will reject the opportunity. They will say they are not interested. They will say that this is not for them. They will say it is not my thing. They will say I'm not cut out for it. They will say I'm too big for it. They will say the business is beneath me. They will say it in such a way as to make you feel bad. Don't feel bad. Don't take it personal. Forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. If only God could open their eyes to see, everything would change. I remember in the Bible, in the book, you see the book of Mob, um, the name of that book, where the Israelites went to war and they were to fight the Moabites or something like that. And um, was it Joshua or who was that? That went to the small army to go fight this huge army. And the people were afraid. Why, how can they fight these people? How can they fight these people? They're so large. And he said, because you don't see. And he prayed and God opened their eyes and they saw angels everywhere that they didn't know were there in the first place. They couldn't see those angels. But when their eyes were opened, they saw it and they knew they were not alone. You see, when people tell you they're not interested in this business, it is because God has not opened their eyes to see. If God opens their eyes to see this business, you will fall on your knees and you will look to God and you say, Father, I'm sorry I doubted you. This business is only open to you because God has found you worthy to take the business, the gospel of this business, and speak the gospel of this business to his people. That's why God has opened your eyes to see this business. That you have seen this business, don't think it is out because, because that you are signed it, don't think because you have the money. Or don't think you are smart, that's why you saw it. You saw this business only because God opened your eyes to see it. The day you start taking the business for granted, God will close your eyes, you will quit. You will close your eyes and you will quit the business. This business is a vocation. It's not just a business. It is a vocation. It is something that allows you to have generational contributions, right? generational contributions. That's what the business does. It gives you the capacity for generational contributions. If you run your business and you produce results, you'll be responsible for creating generational wealth. Some people will have become ambrobers, which is down the line in your genealogy. But because you said yes, they made money, their parents made money, and they are now successful in the business, and they are now succeeding. They are no longer going to become, um, 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 what do you call it? Ritualist or Andromas that you would have become because you said yes. 
But if you said no and you refuse to do the business, and those people go into those vices, you are now responsible for generational wealth. And God will question you and ask you, what did you do with that one talent I gave you? We're going to discuss the talent at a later time. But you need to understand that you don't take this rejection personally. God knew the rejection will come when he put this business in front of you. So when people see you and tell you, I'm not interested, this one is that, that one is that. No problem. No big deal at all. You're not there for them. You're there for people they will never know. You're there for people they might never see. Keep up the grind. Keep on doing the business. Your results will count in the long run. These are 15 tips. If you take these tips, if you use these tips, if you apply these tips and the mindsets you've gotten to your business, you will produce results that will be way bigger than what you can possibly contemplate. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you all.